In this video, we are going to explain how tangent vectors act on functions by taking directional derivatives. So note, it can be a little bit confusing whether in the, in the reading in section 2.3, whether Fortney means the manifold Rn or the vector space Rn. Um, so just be careful when you're reading the book. OK, so you probably recall defining the directional derivative in multivariable calculus. So we'll define something very similar. So the directional derivative of f, function from Rn to R, at a point P in Rn in the direction V sub P, which is an element of the tangent space to Rn at P, is denoted D sub Vp of f, and it's the limit as t approaches 0 of f at P plus Tv minus f at P. Sorry, V sub P divided by t. So one thing to note is that in multivariable calculus, you required a v sub p to be a unit vector, probably. So in that case, if you had, so say, for example, if um, f were a function from r2 to r, and it had some graph, you would take the point p, and then you would take its um, the plane that closest approximated f, um, the plane the, the graph of f, so the plane that was tangent to the graph of f at the point p comma f of p. And you assumed um, that the, let's use pink here, that the, um, if you picked some line, so this is the line p plus tv in Rn, and you took its image um, in the, uh, the, in the sort of intersection of the, the tangent plane uh, with the plane above the, that line in R3, and you were to compute its slope, so like its, its rise over run, then um, that would be the directional derivative in the direction of v. However, since vp is not necessarily a unit vector, dvp at f is just the rise part of the slope of the line in the plane tangent to the graph whoops, of f in r n plus 1 at the point p comma f of p um, above the parameterized line in r n p plus t v at p. So um, if, if v sub p were a unit vector, then this rise is the same as the rise over run. Um, and so it, you would actually get the slope. Um, sorry, this, I don't know what, what I meant by rise of slope of line. It's just the rise of the line. So if, um, if P is actually, if V sub P is actually quite long, then you're actually gonna be computing the, this whole rise, D V sub P and F. Um, you're not normalizing by the length of V sub P. Fortney has a long example that um, makes this very clear. So another thing to note is that directional derivatives can be computed with linear transformations. So d sub um, d in the direction of v sub p of f is the same thing as the limit as t approaches 0 of df at the point p times t at, at um, applied to t times v sub p divided by t. And this is just when you, um, the fact that d df is linear, a linear transformation means that this is just, um, you, can, you can cancel out the t's and this is just df at p applied to v sub p. So this will help us compute directional derivatives. Um, so the way that we are actually going to sort of flip things around and think about things in this class is we're going to think about v, the vector v sub p as acting on the function f. So this is nothing new, we're just defining a new notation which says v sub p acts on the function f by computing the directional derivative of f in the direction of v sub p. But thinking about these things this way um, helps us think about everything sort of more precisely. So this way we can think of, of v sub p as acting on functions f as a differential operator. So what does this mean? Well, being an operator, 
basically means that it's a linear transformation from the space of smooth functions to R. So um, what that means is that uh, V sub P acts on a linear combination of functions by taking the linear combination of uh, the values under V sub P. Uh, moreover, the vectors V sub P are elements of a tangent space. So if um, so this is this first bullet point is for f and g smooth functions from rn to r, or at least differentiable in a and b and r. Um, because v sub p is an element of a tangent space, if v sub p and w sub p are both elements of tp rn, then if I take a linear combination of vectors and apply them to a function f, then I will also get out a linear combination. So that's the same thing as first applying um, the vectors to f, differentiating in the direction of v sub p and w p, multiplying by a and b, and then adding. But what do I mean by um, v sub p being a differential, specifically a differential operator? I mean that it satisfies what I'm going to call the Leibniz rule, which is basically a product rule. If I apply um, v sub p to a product, then I'm going to get f at a point times v applied to g plus g at that point times v sub p applied to f. Basically, this tells me that the product rule holds. So if I want to prove that these three things are true, um, just using the fact that v sub p is equal to uh, the linear transformation df at p applied to v sub p will give me the first and the second. But how do I get the third? So Notice that when I take v sub p and apply it to f, this is df at p applied to v sub p, which is the matrix df dx1 at p all the way out to df dxn at p. And let's assume v has components v1 through vn. So I can rewrite this as the sum from i equals 1 to n df dxi at p times vi. So if v sub p is equal to ei at p, so i.e. the vector that's all zeros except a 1 in the um, ith position, then ei at p is just equal to df dxi at p. And so this is um, sort of the simplest kind of method of differentiation I could think of, uh, of directional differentiation I could think of to apply to a function is just applying the partial derivative with respect to one of the variables. So now I want to prove my Leibniz rule. So let's take um, v at p applied to f. This is um, equal to uh, the sum from i equals 1 to n df g. Sorry, I'm applying it to the product fg dxi at p times vi. Now I can go the sum from i equals 1 to n of df dxi at p times g at p using the regular product rule times vi plus f at p dg dxi at p times vi. And reorganizing all of this tells me so this is basically writing out um, my function v in terms of these partial differential operators df, dxi at p. And um, I can reorganize this to pull out all the g of p terms, sum from i equals 1 to n df, dxi at p, vi, plus f at p times the sum from i equals 1 to n dg, dxi at p times vi. And this is just equal to um, uh, g at p times v sub p of f plus f at p times v sub p of g, which is what I wanted to show.